and in relation to academic institutes of medical research and biomedical research. Now, this conference has shown many are, mm -hmm. and if the public health is excluded because of the prohibitive price to get into it, now I don't say it will impact on public health from the beginning mm -hmm. to be purged or to be subject to ethical scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a, it's a very interesting issue. Happened. Uh, very early genetic sequences in, on the grounds that it would foreclose the use of that uh, to, uh, in science to build uh, uh, new technologies that might benefit humankind. Um, it is, uh, the United States patent regime is very protective of inventors and it's getting a great deal of scrutiny from an ethical standpoint among scholars and researchers in the United States on the argument that because we've lost our experimental use exemption and uh, we don't have a public health or public order uh, uh, exception uh, in the patent law that we are essentially uh, strangling our own science and uh, it's it's definitely something that is at the forefront of discussion in the research community in the U.S. All things against the common good. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Do you allow any more questions? Well, thank you. The environment. Do you expect that, uh, you know, all, all research will be patent driven and uh, so on, and perhaps uh, the other factors will take a backseat. So, what is the way out, really? Because this is really going to drive, particularly the developing countries, the, the where there is a lot of gap, uh, knowledge gap, knowledge divide, and so on. It, it's really going to be more detrimental for those countries, and of course, to a large extent, also bad for the uh, developed nations too. Um, it's an excellent piece international. Um, and it is, of course, very interested in maintaining the patent advantage. Um, it, the question of whether or not it will uh, uh, change science, I think, is we've already had some empirical research that shows that uh, universities have changed their focus from pure science to applied science, where there will be an opportunity to, um, uh, to build lucrative products. And, the, and what, what harm will that do? What, what, if, what discoveries does that not allow us to make? which we might have made by the usual scientific pro process. Uh, we, we don't know. It's very early early uh, uh, questioning, but I think that it's a real danger and one that uh, bears uh, uh, real worthiness as an empirical research subject. Well, thank you very much. This is the end of the session.
some might the possible cost for the public health. And also, we both uh, we understand that it's important to accumulate a kind of the gene database so that we are able to solve some uh, chronic disease problem and also to save the human body might need to be collected and in turn the gene information derived out of the, all those tissues might be important too. And uh, the first part of my introduction is mainly re uh, related to the background information of the Taiwan Biobank. And some of this are mainly uh, uh, something to do with the ideology from the scientific uh, point of view. And I think that I try to uh, avoid uh, the, the, the long long lasting talking about this and many I try to turn to the LC concern and uh, here we all know that gene basically is a kind of the long lasting and uh, close uh, maybe close or inheritable information in that sense it's hardly anyone who claim that he owns the gene or he claim that the gene privacy is something to do with some individual purpose or any individual person is entitled to claim he owns something on it. But on the contrary, we also don't agree that anyone to claim that just for the public good that we can sacrifice any individual's right or its integrity. And then we can say that we are doing for something in good. And that's the spirit of the UNESCO. I think that it's been followed quite well at the very beginning of our uh, banking development. And uh, here uh, is about uh, what we want to do here. Basically, we try to uh, understand the relationship among gene disease and the human phenotype. And also, a small scale collection of the species cannot satisfy the necessary research. So that's why we go through this uh, problem. Because we know that we want so many people to sacrifice their or maybe entitlement or maybe their uh, benefit for this purpose, we do need some constitutional basis to do that. And we believe that uh, a significant contribution from the public good might uh, grant some uh, fund, uh, foundation for doing this. Okay, and uh, let's see, I try to turn to my second part. Okay, basically, I think that so far, Iceland or uh, Estonia and maybe some other countries' experiences from uh, 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 for different purposes in building any kind of gene database. We mainly uh, care more about the informed consent in this uh, tissue collection and also the protection of privacy uh, when we try to store this information and also the benefit sharing that really concern a lot of people because of the, uh, the benefit derived out of this uh, group uh, observe the principle of transparency and also we found that the dispute settlement and some other legislative works are equally important and then here are something that I would like to refer to especially uh, uh, following the regulation of UNESCO and uh, the following five uh, topics are the main subject to be covered in my next part of the presentation. Uh, first of all, in concern with the informed consent. Here we all understand that uh, this consent requirement has become a very popular principle of medical treatment and uh, morality. But the principle is not just uh, for, uh, for uh, the protection to someone who participate in some kind of the medical research. Rather, in the occasion of biobanking, we are really dealing with something that the subject or the participant or even the researcher, they don't understand what's going to happen in the future to those data or tissue. In this sense, we do need to consider how can we conduct an informed consent rationally and in compliance with the required autonomy that trying to protect an individual subject. And here we do accumulate some experiences. First of all, we believe that the informed consent should be conducted in principle on an individual basis so that we can observe the required autonomy of a 
personal uh, wellness. However, to some extent, we need to understand that, just like I mentioned, the gym doesn't belong to anybody. So, how about his family? Isn't that right? The third party, or the relative, or the next kids are entitled to something too, because we don't know what's going to happen to those data. So in this sense, don't we need to think about the way to protect those relatives or some third parties? Yes, we do need to think about that. So in Taiwan Bar Banking, we try to include the so-called the family consent or community consent as the exceptional cases. And certainly, we need to work out a transparent process and also try to figure out a way to do that. And we are working on that. So in principle, we believe the informed consent of the general principles should be honored in the first in the first hand, in, in the first case. And then we need to include the exceptional cases in relation to the application of the principle of group consent and community consent and also the family consent. And also uh, The second issue is about the management of data and the maintenance of privacy. So far, we don't have a data at hand yet, but we already start thinking about who's going to own it. So far, we believe that it should be taken as a public domain. However, it doesn't mean that we should prohibit it from any public access, including the possible business use. This is many relation in, in relating uh, to the possible pharmaceutical uses and it could be a hot issue in the future we expect so we are now working on the protocol for the public access and also the management policy for that but in principle we take this data as a public domain that's for sure and uh, secondly we also understand about the possible danger uh, to keep this data away from the possible privacy infringement and uh, also we do need to understand how can we really honor the principle of benefit sharing, especially to the third party or the general public in the near future, which was announced by the UNESCO as the uh, general principle. And again, we are now working on this. And also about the management and the uses, uh, usage of the genetic database, which concerns genetic information very much. And uh, the main issue will be uh, something to do with the management of the anonymous information. Yeah, so far we certainly try to take the principle and uh, apply the technology of the so-called uh, two-way blinded approach. And uh, in addition to that, we also care very much about the possible personal infringement, I mean in physical, in physical sense, the personal infringement. So we need to work out some kind of the security protocol and also the standard operation process for that and we are working on that right now and for the benefit sharing we all believe that it's required but during the process of our biobanking efforts we need to figure out what does the UNESCO means about the, uh, the benefit sharing people especially some subjects they care about would they be entitled to uh, the result of the examination at the very first stage and uh, how about thereafter if we find something beneficial or maybe it could be patentable, uh, wouldn't they be entitled to something? Yes, we are working on that closely in uh, conjunction with what uh, has been uh, explored by the UK Biopublic. We try to promote a kind of the such as uh, uh, friendship, I mean the a club for the participants. Uh, <coughs> and we try to promote this kind of the uh, uh, participants organization and try to uh, help them to uh, nominate some kind of a capital representative so that they can participate in the future development of the biobank. And uh, I believe that that's the best way to uh, observe the UNESCO principle. You just invite a capable representative to be there and uh, to participate on behalf of this uh, tens of thousands of people. And that's our policy. And in regard to the dispute settlement, now, in addition to uh, offer some kind of the uh, complaint, direct line, and also trying to apply the mitigation mechanism, which is available right now under our legal system. And we try to promote a kind of expert panel in 
through settlement. And that, that's going to be a kind of internal design, I mean, an organizational approach uh, created under the biobank by itself. And uh, for others, uh, we found that the uncertainty of damage is something that uh, troubles us because people keep asking us when we, uh, I mean, in observation of the transparency requirement, when we try to explain to the subject, saying we try to protect them to the extent as we can do, still we make some reservation. We tell them that still there might be something not beyond our anticipation or expectations. So people come back to us, then what are you going to do with this? And uh, so far, in addition to the possible insurance problem and uh, maybe some public fund created to cover the damage, and we are still working on something with uh, some uh, innovative idea. And maybe in the near future, we can share these experiences with you. As a whole, a lot of these things, just like uh, we narrated in our article, you, have, you probably can see some uh, of this in our PowerPoint. We try to uh, include the UNESCO principle within our policy statement. And uh, also we try to turn that into our practical. And so we believe that only in this way we can really earn the public trust and so that we can really, uh, really uh, fulfill the goal that we plan on in the very beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, please, David, are there uh, any questions? It's a government under the government framework. Yeah, so, government, in which way, what mechanisms and which groups, which communities would you share their benefits with? You had, because an ego statement which you quote and discuss, we try without difficult to identify any particular community. How have you discussed that in Taiwan? Sure, it's a good question. Actually, uh, we try to avoid uh, the beneficiary issue being uh, discussed at the individual basis, basically. And yes, it's a good approach to, uh, to uh, care about this issue on the regional basis or the community-based basis. This is because this is a kind of population-based research. So in some way, you can figure out, or you are able to figure out some kind of the community. And then, when you try to talk to them, you want to uh, ask them to sort of nominate a kind of representative. And then, you try to figure out a way you can have a contribution to their future. For instance, maybe, uh, their public health treatment in this sense. Maybe they can be assisted out of the research result. And certainly, we are going to inform them of this. And for the short-term benefit, we all know that the public health research should come on a very good, reliable, and moral mechanism. And we try to sort of apply the mechanism we develop under this biobanking project and then to have the community participate in some public health research for their own purpose or for their benefit. I think that has been quite welcome so far. <coughs> some domestic community who participate in the biobank and UNESCO principle and could be very beneficial too. And we are working on that, including the process. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'd like to hold time uh, and um, the title is on uh, rights designation and the system uh, arrangement for genetic te testing techniques. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I come from Hua University of Science and Technology in China. It is an honor of mine to be invited to this important conference. Uh, since 1990s, human beings have been experienced a global evolution in science and technology as one of the most representative fields of science and technology. Life science technology also plays a increase in the value fields, complex relational 
influence the development of science and knowledge of life dignity. By the revolution object in international documents, genetic testing technology can reflect the practice and uh, sensitive topics of life science technology comprehensively. So we choose genetic test testing technology as a case to analyze the problem of bioethics. As a bioethics, genetic testing technology should be also written with values. Now that the technology is not until in value, we can no longer consider technology just a tool, but should give it a rather more replication. When this new technology dishes into the daily life of human beings without any ideological privilege at all, the choice of child uh, social orders may be used. The material serenity of human cannot be guaranteed. Common asks will be validated. Individual dignity will be con contaminated. Follow with genetic discrimination. Since such situation can be predicted, then what shall be done? We must make the sense ethics turn into a stronger factor of genetic testing technology knowledge options, and then make the sense ethics known internalized in the structure of activities related with genetic testing technology, which means stronger ethics. Genetic testing technology can be subreviews to traditional ethics. The correct term is the ability of responsible more and more of West in the reported genetic testing technology. This means that enable genetic testing testing technology can be regulated efficiently. The ability in situation must be noted in the related ethics regulation. As a matter of fact, liability is one element of law. Ethics and law are mutually related. Law rules are the externality of ethics rules, and the ethics rules are justice foundation of law rules. Law is not only important and the intention of law cannot be separated from guarantee of ethics grid. Ethics and law are closely related. Rapid development of science technology seriously in impact the current ethical order to human beings, especially the by ethics order. Thus, contemporary by ethics come out. Contemporary by ethics intended in and just broke up the most <coughs> four fundamental. A uh, fundamental principle in principle of why material asks autonomy in a innocence, no manifestance and justice. The common more rules of respect life is the uh, unanimity value and higher many can support right to life. However, right to life is not only limited in maintaining living especially in nowadays. What was more important to improve life likely? Impending human's life value and uh, maintain life dignity. Nevertheless, it uh, obviously not enough only has by ethics in order to control genetic testing technology effectively must introduce liability institution to relieve the Ethics revolution. Normally, why ethics must be right down into law. At present, UNESCO, WHO, HUTO, and uh, so like international organizations, 
materials of declaration, statements, and normals about the ASCOS. Such international documents concerned with law very much, especially encouraging on the genetic testing technology. Through the form, the paper concludes the acknowledged right design and institution agreement of genetic testing technology. Under such international background, China's acquisition, the government of China National Research Institution, all take many methods to expand the through the analyzed to cross of access acquisition about genetic testing knowledge, we are able to sum up the problem exceeding the aspect of Chinese biological. The contradiction between industry chain global vision of logical industries and the interest of China. The contradiction between manufacturing of biases will and the control diversity, common price and the scientific research freedom. The contradiction between <coughs> localization and the globalization of laws. The contradiction between the hopeful developing prospect of electrical industries and the tiger effort of biases and laws. Consider Concerning from various points of legal, political reason, the essence of uh, social, ethical, and legal actions brought in life science technology is how legal practitioners apply their reason to possibility of choosing just in favor of protection. <coughs> Considering that life science technology can bring an uh, ethical shocking in order to slow the above problem, to fulfill a good interaction between life science technology and social norms system in China. It should be coincide with the following five points. The transcend the independent R and D complexity of biological industries. Unveil the cost Examine the hidden factor of ethics and value. Establish a new social ethics and value system. That is, by ethical norms, introduce a flexible ethics restriction institution. Link up with the statements and the Declaration of the National of the Nations, the paper appeal setting problem of living life science technology fields in China, hoping to listen the views of international experts to the problem of bioethics in China in order to realize the humanness of human beings finally. Benefit human beings and their, li their living environment. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? You proposed to the fourth option was propose a new social ethic. So I wonder um, where. What do you think, uh, number three, establish a new social ethics and value system? Where do we find the new social ethic and value system? Yeah, we have Professor uh, job basically about the social ethics. I think it's, I think it's a kind of the value, value establishment uh, efforts trying to sort of uh, 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 introduce uh, some kind of uh, the, uh, moral standard into the society, especially into uh, the research communities and also uh, the community uh, who uh, use the end products of these research groups. 
and that's the way uh, an academic research institute can start first. And then uh, we need to sort of promote the communication among the different stakeholders and see if they can to some extent reach the consensus. Basically, uh, Professor Zhao thinks that this kind of progressive efforts, especially when the uh, macro environment is still uh, not so clear about uh, this uh, uh, ethical, uh, I mean, the reflection to uh, the move of technology. So I think it's a kind of the, uh, the work needs to be further uh, promoted. Thank you. So in a sense, social ethic is the uh, ethic of communication and consultation and through different stakeholders. Okay, any uh, comments on the floor? Thank you. Hey, you, you can, uh, um, we can have a Chinese dialogue if you say UN language, it's fine. <laughs> we need a translation. Oh no, I've got a long step. You just write the next step. Yeah, all the implications of gene therapy development. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman and uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, for this is very late, so I will uh, present uh, very uh, shortly. And uh, the topic I would like to present here uh, is the health signification of the gene therapy under the UNESCO Declaration as a Taiwan's perspective. Uh, Dr. Lin, my teacher, is a professor of the law, and me as a medical doctor. And uh, we would like to talk about the, uh, the uh, topic, uh, including four parts. That's, uh, <clears throat> the first part is the meaning of the gene survey. And the second part is the development chain of the gene survey regulation <laughs> in Taiwan. And uh, uh, the third part, I would like to talk about it, the status of the regulations of gene survey clinical trial. Uh, the fourth, uh, we will uh, try to uh, do some uh, suggestion on the regulations. Um, what's the uh, meaning of the gene therapy? Uh, the meaning of the gene therapy uh, is uh, through the way of import, importing gene or cell contained uh, uh, gene, a uh, modified gene, uh, via gene gun or uh, a vector uh, into the human body to treat a disease or uh, to recover uh, one's health. Uh, there's a thousand, there's a thousand and two hundred, a thousand two hundred and sixty clinical trials of gene therapy from uh, 1989 to uh, January 2007 in the whole world. Uh, it's estimated that. Uh, 5.5 billion dollars market uh, in uh, 2008. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, the first clinical trial of gene therapy from uh, 1995 to 2004 um, is armed um, to adopt uh, the vascular endothelial growth factor for the treatment of the chronic critical low limb ischemia. Uh, <clears throat> The development trend of the gene therapy regulation, uh, based on the uh, development of the gene therapy, uh, Austria is the uh, only country that has uh, the Ultra Gene Therapy Technology Act in uh, 1995. Uh, but most countries, uh, the gene therapy uh, regulations uh, is in the, uh, in the uh, medicine law or uh, medical care law. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, it's involved in civil law, criminal law, uh, medical care law, consumer protection law, etc. And some of the administrative uh, ordinance. Uh, there's two uh, UNESCO declarations. Uh, this is a universal de uh, declaration on bioethics and human rights and the International Declaration on Human Gene Data. We recognize that uh, human health depends not only on the development of the science and the technology research, but also on the psychological, social, and the cultural factor. So uh, we uh, 
are going to talk about the status of regulation of gene therapy clinical trial in Taiwan. That will be talking about four parts. Uh, the, the basic principle, the application, how to apply for a gene uh, therapy clinical trial, and the regulation, that's the censorship procedure of clinical trial, and uh, the most important is the protection of the intergene therapy clinical trial. Thus, must be a uh, five uh, principles. Uh, the first one is must be uh, life straightened. And uh, the, the, the uh, life quality is very bad uh, due to the disease. And the second one is uh, it must be a uh, scientific basis, uh, predictable, effect, and safe. And the third is uh, it must be uh, more excellent than uh, present treatment. And uh, uh, the fourth is uh, benefits always the maladies. And uh, uh, it combined to the somatic cell uh, cannot be in a uh, germ cell. So uh, how to apply for a uh, gene therapy clinical trial? Well, we will try to regulate in uh, two parts. This uh, from the first part is application entity. The application Entity uh, it must be a teaching hospital and approved by the uh, central authorities uh, that can do uh, the uh, clinical trial. And uh, uh, but uh, uh, we besides the regular of that uh, entity, but we are shortly uh, we are shortage in the establishment of the lecture standard regulations. So I think that uh, we, we, we are uh, going to do uh, some effort to uh, establish the laboratory standard regulations. And uh, uh, there's a, a lot of regulations about uh, the, uh, um, the uh, left side as the procedure and the, the right side as the associated uh, regulations. There's a lot of regulations that's the uh, how we, we are uh, regular so uh, so detailed this uh, just talking about um, it's including a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the ordinance laws and some uh, decorations a label uh, this uh, we we are establishing a private uh, prior censorship of the gene survey and after approval there's a mechanism that the supervision of the trial of the uh, gene therapy. So, um, oh, we, we, we are going to talk about the, the censorship procedure of the clinical trial. Uh, the uh, gene therapy clinical trial the, uh, the, uh, in Taiwan, um, this must be a street label. Uh, the first label is the, we call the institutional uh, regulation. This, uh, uh, prior, uh, we call it a prior uh, censorship by there's a central authority to regulate that. Um, besides the above two, uh, there must be uh, the, the third by uh, some ad, uh, uh, academic uh, professionals, as, uh, including two that uh, preliminary and uh, after preliminary there's a censorship. Uh, Let's also regulate uh, in the uh, Article 4 of the application of the uh, operation standard of the gene survey of clinical trial and the Article 1 of the procedure of the application and the censorship of new uh, medical technology. And uh, this is quite a complicated, so we uh, brief that in the flow chart. Uh, the flow chart is talking about the uh, mechanism of the application and the censorship. So uh, we, uh, we see on uh, the left side that's, uh, uh, is uh, prior uh, censorship. And after the approval, uh, we go into the uh, supervision after trial. Uh, we can see that uh, the prior censorship, they have a three label, as in the institution, as in the hospital, teaching hospital, or clinical trial hospital, and then go to the central authority, the department of health, and the third, as uh, export to uh, exam them. And after that, we, we are uh, a lot of the uh, uh, procedure to protect uh, uh, test person's uh, interest. Uh, as usually, have emergency procedure.
teachers. Uh, it's not only to, uh, to inspect the measure, but also to uh, inspect the effect. So, uh, uh, it's uh, quite uh, very detailed, but I would like to uh, talk about this in Taiwan. Uh, we are shortage uh, in the uh, last one, this, it's the, in the emergency condition, the, uh, the effect, okay, uh, the third topic would have to cover interest of the uh, test person. That, uh, the formal way we, we are get uh, informed consent, this, uh, the system is very popular, but we are uh, focused on the, uh, sufficient information offer and uh, precisely. And uh, the following, I think I have talked about that. Uh, so, finally, we talk, uh, there are some suggestions on the regulation timelines. Uh, some are recommended, uh, recommended as uh, we uh, established a central biosecurity committee and we put forward the guideline of the regulations. And uh, uh, we uh, like to try and integrate uh, uh, related accident operation regulations and uh, the, uh, the most important is correct to send information of test person after receiving the gene search clinical trial. So we conclude that uh, the uh, legislative idea we need to uh, rapid response but not hurry to intervene. And uh, we focus on the establishing of the standard, uh, the education of the professionals, and implement, uh, implementation of the uh, certifications, rather than uh, the establishment of the broad principles rules. And next, uh, there's a consensus in the society. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the floor for questions. This is interesting. In 1994, uh, as a member of UNESCO International Bioethics Committee, we considered a report on gene therapy, and that report used the classical box of the somatic cell gene therapy and germline gene therapy, uh, therapeutic application, cosmetic application, and the only one box which it suggested uh, would be unethical is cosmetic use for gene therapy, a uh, germline gene therapy. It considered that cosmetic use of somatic cell gene therapy could be ethical. I'd like to know in uh, Taiwan if you have considered the cosmetic use of somatic gene therapy and whether it would be regulated differently to plastic surgery regulations and uh, can we have a private market when it is safe? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. That's a, a great question. And uh, uh, I will answer that uh, briefly that according to the five principles of the gene therapy of clinical trial in Taiwan, the first of all is must be uh, life straightened. So uh, I don't think this uh, in the Meanwhile, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good, uh, uh, it's suitable for a uh, for a uh, uh, cosmetic purpose. Uh, but I think that uh, maybe in the near future, the, uh, the whole society will, will, uh, will change the consensus. And so that we will apply that uh, the gene therapy are in the cosmetic field. Uh, so, um, it's a use of the cosmetic use uh, in the future when it becomes safe. Okay. Uh, as it's the same as in the cosmetic purpose. Uh, but I think that it's, uh, it's, it's, we do a face of the definition of the illness. So, uh, when a uh, new technology development, uh, that will be faced a problem that uh, as the procedure is for the uh, interest uh, of mankind, or is this is just the cosmetic purpose. But if we don't think that uh, it's a union of the cosmetic problem, 
that would be very difficult to, uh, to, to go forward there. Chris? Yeah, because I'm involved more with the regulatory side. Technology is from the same institute with the two speakers here. Uh, I have a question. Um, as you mentioned in your PowerPoint slides, is the uh, five basic principles of uh, clinical trial of gene therapy, and I found it's uh, mainly focused on risk benefit analysis. Right, is the first one is life threatened and the scientific basis. So uh, I'm just wondering, uh, what's the guiding principle for the risk benefit analysis? Because now there's a different approach. It's a precautionary principle of uh, uh, guilty upon innocent or something else. Yeah, because this is uh, yeah, for, for gene therapy is uh, still you know, in the uh, process of research. So how to guide you know, the risk assessment this uh, risk benefit analysis? Uh, I think Professor is right. Yeah, I think this is a good question and I think a lot of countries uh, especially when the gene therapy start attracting uh, the world's attention, people start talking about the risk. And uh, in Taiwan, we at the very beginning, like three or four years ago, we take advantage of what's been done, uh, what's been done in the environmental area about a pre precautionary approach. We know there are some risks you just cannot let it be happy because it might be too So we tend to take uh, this precautionary approach. But we also notice that uh, the regulation could be sort of subcategorized into different level, subject to what kind of conduct you, you are working on. For instance, for the basic research, that's one approach. And we have a lot of the regulation for that. Many uh, focus on like including like animals' life and this kind of things. And uh, for the second level, we think it's something to do with the clinical trial or pharmaceutical area. And uh, then the final product. We have conducted even some kind of consumer protection study on the hypothetical cases. And, and, yeah, and uh, we believe that the risk could be sort of subcategorized into different level, and then you apply a different approach to do with that. But the principle should be the precautionary approach. German. Today I would like to talk to you about uh, some of our work in the field of bioethics and law. Uh, the topic I'm going to present is, is in, in this section will describe some of the important aspects of bioethics and cultural pluralism, and I will focus my discussion in Taiwan. I would like to divide my short talk into three parts. The first part deals with the international framework of bioethics and cultural pluralism. The second part concerns some facts and issues in Taiwan. And then the last part relates to some reflection on bioethics and cultural tourism and how we try to make them into practice. Uh, to, begin, to begin with, we have to consider the two trends in the world about bioethics and ethnic. Considering the fast spread of biotech across countries, bioethics would no longer stay as definitely a national policy. There seems, there seems to need some global bioethics norms. That's why several international institutions have proposed their statesmen or guidelines on bioethics. Among others, Hugo, WHO, and the UNESCO are the most important efforts in this field. On the other hand, international community has also recognized the value of cultural tourism and our duty to respect it. This is especially vital when concerning the minority and in indigenous peoples, because these peoples' culture are prone to be destroyed by the mainstream society. If we, if we recognize that a person's identity in two minorities, there are issues like where did we come from? Where did we come from? Which is the, what is the concept of family really means? How should we treat ourselves or our family? when facing the difficult options between sovereign life and peaceful death. Biotech may give us more options, but makes things more difficult. 
That's why the Bioethics Declaration of UNESCO has traced very much on ethnics and cultures. And let's see the Article 6 in Bioethics Declaration about consent. I think um, I should uh, skip reading this article. Uh, article 6, Article 11 and 12, um, they all stress very much on uh, ethnics and cultures. Um, so, um, for the sake of time, I will uh, skip reading this. I will analyze my topic by considerably abundant ethnic groups of Taiwan people, among whom Chinese have textbook an overwhelming proportion just migrated here about 400 years ago. The residents of Taiwan before that time were indigenous peoples who were universally called Austronesian. Austronesian. Although the percentage of these indigenous people is less than 2 percentage in the total population of Taiwan, the, ethnic, the ethnicities different from Chinese are continuously drawing the attention of anthropologists and biotechnology scholars. The Chinese people in Taiwan can also be divided into three groups. Since less 20 years, Taiwan has consistently transformed from authoritarian do domination into democratic society. It has thus led to intense ethnic relations in the democratic and pluralistic society. The subjects related to ethnic groups has a sens sensitivity to some degree in Taiwan society. That's just one side of the facts. On the other hand, the government of Taiwan has regarded biotechnology as a prospective industry and invested tens of millions US dollars in national genomic research projects from this decade. Therefore, the issue of biotechnology and bioethics in Taiwan are entangled by various social, various social needs, among which they will include at least the study interest of scientific researchers, anthropologists, and the clinical trial of the medical and the medicine industry, and the requirement of the indigenous peoples to liberate from the legacy of colonialism and regain ethnic autonomy as well as dignity. And to help you understand the sense of it, uh, to help you uh, understand the sensitivity of indigenous peoples' autonomy in Taiwan. I must brief the history and diversity of indigenous people in Taiwan. They are said, they are said to enter into Taiwan from 4000 BC to 3000 BC and politically colonized and economically exploited by Dutch, Japan, Japanese and Chinese successively. There are 13 tribes in them. It's difficult test. It is difficult test to try to unite them into a more powerful group. But their political status and legal rights have gained much prog progress after democratization. As you can see here, that the central government set up Council of Indigenous People in 1996 and the new amendment of con constitution in 2004 had preserved six seats in Congress, and the total number of congressmen is only 113. So that's, that's a quite a uh, uh, proportion. Uh, besides that, the amendment of constitution in 1996 also declared cultural pluralism protection. That was a big progress for Taiwan. But nothing is more important than the basic law of indigenous peoples enacted in 2005, because it tried to adjust many legal relationships between, between indigenous peoples and the Chinese people. Although with all these efforts, weakness in, weakness in economic position and discrimination in social life still make indigenous people feel lack of dignity. Among other important articles, Article 21 of the um, Basical law of indigenous people uh, says uh, government or indigenous uh, government, government or in 
individuals must consult with the indigenous people and get their consent or attendance before they exploit land. Utilize, utilize resources, protect ecology, and do academic research inside indigenous people's land. And the benefits should be shared with indigenous people. And this article endorses indigenous people with rights of consent and rights of attendance upon the acts of uh, exploitation, uh, use, or research in their own regions. At past, anthropologists or biotechnologists, researchers often got into indigenous people's regions for several, uh, surveying and studying without sufficient explan explanation into indigenous people or give them chance of uh, attendance. Next, I will provide some reflection, but, um, but uh, in, uh, because the sake of time, I will skip um, this, this page. Um, um, I, I propose some question, and um, I'm afraid I have, no, I have no time to discuss this. And I will go directly into um, some of our work, uh, try to um, uh, you know, make the um, suggestion for uh, biobank research and uh, other biomedical research. As a member of the research group in LC regarding the construction of Taiwan Biobank, I have already started discussion on bioethics and indigenous people's rights in academia, and I have put forward some norms of research ethics. If this norm can if these norms can be fulfilled in the establishment of the biobank, they may also be extended into other biomedical research activities, especially in international collaborative research. These norms can be briefly stated as follow. Um, here, I, I would, um, uh, is, um, as you can see, uh, and uh, every genetic study activity involving indigenous people should try to get that ethnic group's consent besides a general examination of its ethics by IRB. In fact, we think uh, we consider that some kind of community review board will be encouraged, a community review board. And then the norm two, uh, we think that bio biomedical research should regard improving the health situation of indigenous people as its intended. This can also be guaranteed by the reviewing process of the community review board. And the norm three, we think that if the, um, the biomedical research should lay out the patterns of sharing benefit, among which the most proper one is the feedback of the healthcare resources. Um, um, sorry. And regarding this point, I would like to respond to uh, be an issue in general, because um, you cannot appeal to altruism and, uh, and uh, also appeal to beneficiary in the same time. Uh, but um, considering the special status of indigenous people in Taiwan and some obligations from international law and Taiwan's law, we should find some way of beneficiary to indigenous peoples if it's possible. Thank you for your attention. Uh, regarding 
uh, thinking about that knowledge, what kind of uh, cultural difference we should pay uh, more attention to. And I, I uh, try to discuss what, do, what does respect mean. Yeah, respect doesn't mean uh, leave them alone or that's it, that's fair. I know uh, everything is right uh, if you if you are country uh, but but uh, ethics uh, ethics and um, and and the human right and reason human reason is the base is the common base and um, so uh, uh, that what what can indigenous people's bioethics suggest to us? Uh, I think uh, is, I think um, the more ecological bioethics uh, is, uh, will be um, will be uh, very use very um, useful to learn for our mainstream society. I think that. Okay, thank you. I, thank you very much. Uh, I just one point. Yes, can I, a previous five or six cultural uh, declarations declarations on cultural heritage.